Should time be destroyed? When a YouTube channel asks whether time should be destroyed, you could be forgiven for thinking that someone's forgotten to take their medication. I mean, how can you destroy time? Smash up a bunch of clocks, put yourself into a coma, send a hitman after Morris Day's backing ban? All great suggestions, but actually we're talking about the concept of time as experienced by humans. And whether our increased understanding of its properties means we need to rethink our relationship. According to our knowledge of physics and the human mind, time does not appear to be a fixed metric. Various situations, both physical and mental, can distort the passage of time for one or more observers. With that in mind, from a societal perspective, we have posed ourselves a question. Should time be destroyed? Or just another pawn used to further propagate what... The most commonly accepted theory regarding the nature of time describes it as inseparable from the three dimensions of space, since the observed rate at which time passes for an object depends on its relative velocity with regards to the observer. Special relativity states that time must be considered alongside height, width, and depth as a singular entity known as space-time. It isn't too complicated to link time and space to our everyday lives. When you travel in a car, you know that if you travel at 60 kilometers an hour, you'll cover 60 kilometers in an hour. Unless some jerk cuts you off and you have to introduce him to your baseball bat, Mr. Happy. He is not a polite man, let me tell you. But things become problematic when we introduce time dilation quite literally into the equation. Einstein's theory of general relativity tells us time can be manipulated by gravity. If you have a sufficiently massive and attractive object such as a star, a black hole, or Terry Crews, the immense gravitational force created can warp the fabric of space-time towards it. This creates something called gravitational time dilation, whereby objects experience a slower passage of time the closer they are to the gravitational source. This dilation has resulted in the Earth's core being 2.5 years younger than its surface and people who fly on airplanes experience this discrepancy every single day. Albeit on a scale of nanoseconds, that goes entirely unnoticed by anyone who isn't holding an atomic clock. However, if humans were to one day exist on a world much larger than our Earth, or if they were to pass by an object many times more massive, their entire experience of time would be completely disrupted. A few minutes for one set of observers may end up being several hours or days for those in another area of space-time. That being said, the object in question would need to be pretty darn massive to warp time to any considerable degree. Jupiter has the largest gravitational mass in our solar system, and its gravitational time dilation would add no more than a few minutes to your lifespan relative to what would be seen here on Earth. The effects of velocity time dilation are equally weak unless you're going close to light speed. Special relativity says that the faster an object is moving, the slower it experiences time. To demonstrate this concept, imagine if you fired Mary Kate Olsen into space while Ashley remained on Earth. Doing this would achieve two things. First, you'd completely ruin any chance of a full house reunion, and second, you would create a huge age discrepancy between the two twins. If Mary Kate were propelled at a fast enough speed, she would experience the passage of time more slowly than Ashley and would therefore age less within the time frame of the journey. Precisely how wretchedly haggard Ashley would be when Mary Kate returns depends on how often she's moisturized and, more importantly, how fast and how far we'd fired Mary Kate into the cosmos. Ten years of twinless existence for Ashley Olsen here on Earth may feel like just one year to the space-based Mary Kate. But velocity-based time dilation requires incredibly high speeds to have any great effect on human beings' perception of time. You'd need to move at one-fifth light speed to see a 1% change, and this restriction also applies to star systems too. Our solar system moves at an estimated 230 to 250 kilometers per second as it orbits the center of the Milky Way. The speed of light is thought to be 299,792 kilometers per second. That means we're moving at less than 0.001% the speed of light right now. 
One of the fastest moving stars in our galaxy is a white dwarf, which astrophysicist Ken Shen calculated as orbiting at 2400 kilometers per second. This star's binary POW went supernova and sent it barreling through our Milky Way faster than almost any object we've ever seen in our galaxy. But even this speedy little devil only reached 0.01% the speed of light. It would need to move 20 times as fast as it does now to achieve the 1% difference in time perception we noted earlier. So back to our original proposition, should we destroy our notion of time based on the fact that time itself is not a static entity? Do the theories of general and special relativity bear any relevance to our human use of time here on planet Earth? Let's consider the things we use time to regulate in our modern society. You serve a prison sentence for X number of years, you go to work every day for X number of hours, and your girlfriend left you because you only last about X seconds in the bedroom. These are just some aspects of everyday life where time is used to determine value. But now that we know time can fluctuate, does its fluid nature render our existing time-based systems obsolete? Probably not since neither gravitational nor velocity time dilation is ever likely to affect the perception of time for anyone who remains on this planet. Unless you've got a particularly sassy and physics-minded lawyer, that is. Imagine if you were given 20 years for murder by a judge. Your lawyer might argue against you serving 20 years in Earth jail and instead propose two years in a rocket ship space jail moving at ultra-fast speeds. The victim's family won't know the difference. Plus, I hear space travel is good for rehabilitation. And in the space jail showers, dropping the soap is much more difficult. Okay, joking aside, the idea that time isn't fixed is an itch that needs to be scratched. Because while there may be no practical relevance to the physical dilation of time, the mental warping of hours, minutes, and seconds has many implications for individual humans and society as a whole. Time perception studies focus on how people perceive time within the confines of their own mind. As the old saying goes, time flies when you're having fun. And I certainly feel as though the seconds are flying by whenever I'm stroking the smooth, fuzzy skin of a freshly plucked peach. Don't judge me, it's how I unwind. And who among us hasn't experienced the slow passage of time when the working day seems never-ending? Or when your friend insists on telling you what their dumb, ugly kid has done for the bazillionth time today? Oh good, they said the word mama? That's amazing. I have a job, and a house, and a girlfriend, and a degree. Does your child have any of that? <laughs> no. Well, then go to hell and achieve something, you overindulged little jerk. Lord, I hate that kid. Anyway, as I was saying, the perception of time is anecdotally known to slow down or speed up depending on what humans are experiencing at any given moment. At present, it's impossible for one human to communicate these feelings directly to the mind of another. But we can use various brain analysis techniques and self-reported feelings to judge how and why this discrepancy occurs. It was once thought that time only appears to slow down in hindsight when we recall how we felt during a period of heightened emotions, and that in the actual instance of an event, the brain experiences and processes time normally. This is now thought to be inaccurate, and we believe the perception of time genuinely does change in the moment, since time perception is based on the sum of stimuli associated with cognitive processes and environmental changes. Thus, the perception of time requires a complex neural mechanism and may be changed by emotional state, level of attention, memory, and diseases. Furthermore, a 2012 paper called Time Slows Down During Accidents states that, according to the suggested framework, our cognitive processes become rapidly enhanced. As a result, the relation between the temporal properties of events in the external world and in internal states becomes distorted with the consequence of external world appearing to slow down. To put it simply, our minds appear to slow time down because they become super efficient and focused during periods of danger, with this feeling potentially related to some form of primitive survival instinct. But this doesn't explain why time seems to slow down during a long and drawn out situation. You may want to die during a boring geography lecture, but there's no real threat to your existence. We also don't know why enjoyable moments seem to pass by in an instant. Wouldn't it be great if we could force ourselves to live in the moment and experience pleasurable times more slowly and arduous events in a split second? Is this even possible? For some people, 
Maybe. Dyschronometria is a condition categorized by a cerebellar dysfunction which prevents the sufferer from correctly estimating how much time has passed. At this point, a lesser channel would make a stereotypical joke about the time it takes women to get dressed, but we're better than that. We prefer to talk about firing celebrities into space and stroking peaches for pleasure. Galaxy brain comedy right here, folks, is all I'm saying. But seriously, imagine what it must feel like to never know how much time has passed. Would this affect your enjoyment of a situation? Does a trip to the dentist fly by or drag on? And how long would a lifetime feel? If the human brain can be temporarily tricked through damage to the cerebellum, is further manipulation possible to allow humans to experience faster or slower time at will? This is something we'll only know after further investigation of the neural mechanisms behind human time perception. Philosophers have debated the nature of time and our relationship to it for as long as our species has been aware. And yet, only now are we finally beginning to understand how this fluid element of existence truly works within both the confines of our minds and reality as a whole. As such, the way we treat time in our society must therefore be reconsidered based on its ever-changing state. But should we dispense with it altogether or merely alter it? And if we were to reconsider time as a fluid metric of value, how would our society change? We're going to explore this in our bonus video, A Time Conscious Society, which you can watch over at patreon.com slash strange mysteries now. For a $2 monthly pledge, you'll gain access to this and over a hundred more bonus videos. Stop. Just watch this. You believe. What do you believe in? You believe in your beliefs. Otherwise, why would you believe them? You are free to believe whatever you want, just like you are free to think whatever you want. Free will is what allows you to be you. The beauty of free will is that it allows you to believe in free will. And nothing can ever take that away from you. As humans, we are the pinnacle of life on Earth. The species at the top of the food chain. It is even us who controls the fate of the Earth. And it is we who are the puppeteers manipulating the strings of reality so as to coerce it into whatever we so choose. If you believe that. But what if I were to tell you that there is a form of life, an entity, if you will, that is greater than us? An entity that controls us simply by giving us the illusion that we are the ones in control. What if I were to tell you that every facet of your life, including your destiny, has already been predetermined? And that you, no matter how hard you try, cannot and will not ever be able to change that? Would it be uncomfortable for you to accept that you play no role and have no choice in choosing your own destiny, beliefs, opinions, feelings, actions, or thoughts at all? But that instead, you are just another pawn used to further propagate whatever the true and ultimately mysterious purpose of whatever these beautiful, selfish, lifelike entities wish to achieve. It's only uncomfortable if you believe it to be true. And isn't it only uncomfortable if you choose to believe it's uncomfortable anyway? So which is it? Either your predetermined fate is to safely remain in the dark where you can bathe in blissful ignorance, or you can choose to indulge your curiosity not knowing what the outcome will be. Even if it causes you to lose touch with that one very precious idea we all fight to be sure of, no matter how detrimental that fight may be to us, no matter how much pain we must endure because of it, and no matter how many lives may be sacrificed because of it, including at times our own. The same idea, whoever they are, 
We spur in our ears so much that we forget that it is they who are the architects of it, of this illusion. Reality. Join our $20 premium video tier on patreon.com slash strange mysteries and watch our latest premium video, The Nature of Itself. But only if you choose to.